africa.tv slash ASL2 ENG2. I appreciate it so much. I was watching a video earlier. If you don't know. I, I was watching a video about a hummingbird. Did you know that male hummingbirds, you know, as, as fluttery as they are, male hummingbirds have to impress the female hummingbird. And, uh, in fact, I gotta just show this to you guys. This is amazing. Uh, <laughs> this is some good early game stuff here. Hold on. Hummingbird. Hummingbirds have to have to in, impress the female hummingbird and they have to do a, a erotic an erotic dance to really kind of woo the woman in and the funny part is like they have to woo the girl but she can turn him down so like like hummingbirds legit get turned down which is just a travesty in itself it's like really i just went through all of this practice here and it still didn't work out so i've got the video playing let's see Let's see. This is this is the correct the, the correct interruption here. So we've got we've got said bird. We've got said bird right here. We're gonna pause this. That was only in fast mode anyway. And we're gonna just uh, I'm gonna let this. This is called a hummingbird's face resembles baby octopus. Okay. So so deal with this. Okay. Let's see. Let's skip forward here. Okay. So this is the dance. Right now it, it is it is impressing. Impressing the lady by flapping its wings and doing a butt sway. It is getting it is getting uh, frisky with this girl. The girl saying, "Huh, that's head tilting, but I'm not sure I like it. I don't enjoy the twirl." Oh my God! Is that the predator's face on top of the bird? What is that? <laughs> that terrible sound. That horrible face. What are we watching? No, turn tail and run, girl. You do not want that boy. Oh, oh, die. Die in a fire. Okay. <laughs> oh, game number five. All right, top left-hand corner. We've got Shuttle, the four-game winner, coming against what people are considering the best player in the world. F that noise. It's last as the Terran down at the bottom left. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god <laughs> oh i hope you guys enjoyed that as much as i did that is like the most terrifying thing that i've ever seen yeah that is the most unpleasant turn possible <laughs> oh big fan saying i haven't seen anything yet well that's right i have to be there for my wife's birth and i'm imagining that you know they're gonna lift the 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 sheet they're going to say the baby's coming, and I'm going to see the same exact thing we just watched in that video. Oh my god. That's just my luck. I get I get the, the most horrifying looking child in the world coming out of the most scary place we've ever seen. Alright. <laughs> oh, let's not record that moment. Let's take back 20 seconds of this cast. The SCV is out. The SCV is out and is on and on the move. And this is not flash. This is last. You can see Alpha Go is last. Now, you guys, I hate this argument because people keep saying, "Oh, Flash is the Alpha Go." Last has been Alpha Go forever, and he will always be Alpha Go. So, any of you who want to argue with me, this is like the legit proof here. Uh, so whatever. Yeah, you guys all know what's up. Meanwhile, okay. So what we've seen before. Um, from Shuttle, what well, has worked so well, and now we're going to see it possibly on Circuit Breakers 2, is not only does he does he uh, get a second gate, but a third gate very quickly off, off his uh, two bases. Well, really, he takes a Nexus, but a third gateway right around the time that he takes the third nex uh, his second Nexus. Uh, oh, his natural base. Let me let me get that correct. And it allows a lot of dragoons early on. I love this gate, this early gateway heavy dragoon um, army because it's worked out so well, especially with his mine diffusing. He is really good at picking off mines and dealing with the army effectively. I, I'm hearing I'm hearing footsteps. I'm hearing the pitter patter of of my dog letting in all of the cold air that I'm working so hard to prevent. 
Okay, so uh, assuming that nothing bad happens in this game, I will be right back to take, take care of that. Okay, I return. I return, and I hope you guys are all ready for some Game of Five enjoyment. All right. So the Nexus laid down at the natural base. We continue to see Shuttle's dominance. Will we? Will we, guys? He has won four games in a row. He has defeated two Terran players. He has defeated two Zergs. There's really no one left to challenge him. Just one more Zerg and one more uh, Terran. So, literally, it, you know, if this get, player gets knocked off, then it's just going to be whoever is next as Zerg versus Protoss, which can be pretty amusing. Alright, so, so these Dragoons are already starting to battering ram. And remember, as I said, three gates early on. Um, what we're seeing right now is a slight variation. But really, um, what he did in the first game is that Robotics facility did finish up. And then he dropped down two more gates immediately after. So, let's not jump the gun. We'll see if he is going to add in those two gateways. Just a slightly later timing than game number three, where he actually got those two gateways before the robotics facility. So, slight variations of times. And I think that's more due to the, the fact that the game number two was on Blue Storm. And on Blue Storm, you, you know that it's a two-player map. You have to deal with uh, some uh, pretty heavy early game aggression. And so, it's even better to, to just skip that robotics facility, get those two gateways out, add in those extra dragoons, and then start working towards detection, especially since Shuttle can handle spider mites without an observer, no problem. So those of you guys who are just coming in right now, yes, this is Last versus Shuttle. This is, these are Korean players that have been playing for quite a long time. Uh, these are the KLM uh, Race uh, Wars, I guess we're calling them. Oh my goodness, and now now my, uh, my, my stream hog uh, dog here it just wants to completely take over so we'll put her face on camera while we continue to talk about the fact that five dragoons can get really really annoying and until you actually get to siege mode uh, you you really have to just kind of deal with the fact that these dragoons are just laying down a lot of damage costing a lot of economy burning so many minerals into repairing this bunker and uh, th the damage has been quite good but we're seeing that vultures are gonna get inside of this base you don't want to look at my uh, Robin Williams level hairy arms. And so let's get back to this now. So how many? How much damage here? Whoa, 28 probes? Oh my god. 26 and just decreasing. This is an absurd amount of damage that is coming out. And the worker count has just been completely killed off. Oh, let's see. Eight kills just from that single vulture. It looks like another one is going to go down. So nine kills. And this is exactly what we would expect out of AlphaGo to just uh just completely wreck and and yeah and so and the and the uh, metaphor alliteration that has been used by uh, by store crew is that shuttle sometimes does play like pochu well allowing those two vultures to basically cost him this game uh, is, is quite quite huge all right let me see this is gonna bother me if i don't get this camera set up quite right oh uh, what do you think is is do you like my shirt by the way it says I waste all my time letting my code compile. That was a summary. I guess I could have just read my shirt. Alright. Now back to important things that have been happening here. Um, Vulture is still running towards the back. Making this quite a nuisance. Now Shuttle has dealt with Vultures quite well in the previous games. But here he's actually losing another probe. There's three. Next side though. Three. So he can get this count back quickly. And there's not a third, uh, a, not a third a command center. So here's the important thing. This is where all those extra vultures were coming out because he was blocked in with, uh, he was blocked in by those dragoons over here. So what he did most cleverly is land this factory over here to allow all those vultures to sneak away. So that's where all that damage come from, came from. And I'm sorry to not show that to you guys earlier. I should be more diligent, but I am exhausted by this two plus hour cast now. 
Whew, we will just continue to thrive forward. Someone critiqued me in my video. Someone from last week's Thursday matches. This is my relaxing day of casting, so please understand when I do get exhausted or when I miss things in these casts. Um, just, just be patient and understand. Look at all these tanks going down. I completely thought this was going to get squished, but the probes did have to get pulled. Um, these vultures are, are causing some crazy amounts of damage here again. And, and yeah, nine kills there. The probe count back down to 28, despite the, despite the fact there were three next side. And we're seeing another command center it is landed over here for last. So last is going to be the one with the three base economy. He's already up to 57 SCVs. And now the factories need to start getting laid down. Yeah, he can get up to six factories real quick. I think off these three bases, last is in a pretty good position to win the game. Let's see here. Someone's saying I'm, I'm, I'm too sober. <laughs> That's true. You know, on Thursdays, uh, Thursdays should be thirsty Thursdays. I should be drinking. I've got all this moonshine nearby too. It, it's like blueberry moonshine. I don't I don't know. I forget what, what fruit flavor it is. Which, you know, you don't think that there should be any... Oh, it's apple. It's apple moonshine. That's what it is. So it's not so fruity. Um, but it's it's not like 100 proof. Or, I'm sorry. Um, what is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not 100 proof. Which could be pretty high. It's something pretty weak. Oh, my dog came back in here again. She's so cute. So look at all these uh, Dragoons trying to run in here and just dying to Vultures. This is like a terrible, terrible trade as, as the Dragoons are going to go down. I would love to see what, what Shuttle's uh, plan is going to be from here. Uh, besides having Observers, he's only got four Gateways. He's, he's really low on the Gateway count. He's behind on Workers where he's only sitting at 40. He's not going to be getting any damage done. And and uh, this is gonna get out of control. So you can see, are we up? Are we already at plus plus one is on the way. So that's the first of it. Uh, two more factories getting added on. So this is going to get him up to that seven factory count. And he's just preparing himself for an expansion game. This could be a long TBT if he wants to. All these vultures running in here one more time. And you know, shuttle. I expect you to defend these a little bit better. But you can see that. Uh, these vultures are, are just going to poke in here. Can they get... They can't reach the probes. That's unfortunate. And they shouldn't be able to pick off a pylon without these dragoons going for the defense. I'm being terrorized by this husky. This is this is a travesty. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> She's literally... Oh my god. Look at... Look at the shit. She's just staring at me. I can't... I can't focus. I can't focus. Is she interested? Say Dragoon. Say Dragoon. What do you say, Delilah? What do you say? Say Dragoon. Oh. I, I promise you, she says it any other day. <laughs> I can't handle this. <laughs> Go away. Do stuff. Find the bone. You've got more toys than I do. Oh, oh, this is just so sad. Well, I think Last is going to win this game. That's just a prediction here. I've done a terrible job of casting it. I apologize. And I'll take the next game more seriously. Yeah. What is this, though? Oh, my God. This is ridiculous micro coming out from these two And somehow managing to just keep a good chunk of them alive. We are, we are seeing just a, another level of, of Protoss from, uh, from Shuttle today. He's playing good despite the fact that all these vultures have just kind of oh, ravaged in his, in his uh, worker line. Continually, too. Alright, so these probes, once they go down, this third base will get eliminated. A lot of dragoons coming from over here, too. I'm not even playing with my mouse because I have to, honestly, this hand over here is, uh, is, is just focusing on keeping this husky at bay. Absolutely important that I balance both. So, as we see here, a lot of zelts are uh, going to die very, very quickly. Oh, poor Shuttle. I'm sure he doesn't even know where the GG button is at this point. He's forgotten after a four-game win streak. But Terran is keeping it all the dream alive. Of course, when it's last. The last can kill two more Protoss players and one more Zerg. Shuttle's done all the, all, literally all the work for everyone else. That's kind of the irony of this whole thing. There's not that many players left. 
So really, uh, you know, with this Protoss being eliminated, Zerg seemed to be in a pretty good spot too. GG. <coughs> All right, I think the dog wants back outside. Then we'll go into game number uh, six. Ah, uh, poor shuttle. Wanted to go for the all kill. All right, let me go take care of this. Yo guys, so like my, my wife is totally into stained glass and she buys a bunch of stained glass lamps and she buys uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, antiques. She's totally into that stuff. And so I decided that she should start making her own stained glass. And we got like, we got a knife cutter. We've got the actual glass. I mean, this is some cool stuff. So what we did, we got our, we got our first cuts in. You can see as we, we cut strips of glass off a giant a giant sheet. And you know what? While, while stained glass kind of sounds like it would be a little bit of a girly thing, it, this is going to benefit me so much. And, no, not because I'm getting bonus points and it'll lead to bedroom stuff. Because I get a soldering gun. And I get to solder stuff together. And that's just badass. So, I'm totally stoked. That's what you should always do. If your girl's into something neat like that, then then uh, just just try and find like the best situation for it to benefit yourself. Cutting glass, snapping glass, like it has an exhilarating sound when you snap it to, goosh, you know, just has a good goosh sound when you snap it. And of course, that that may just be me hulking it. <laughs> You're supposed to get clamps that that like uh, pliers that, that allow you to to snap it pretty easily, but I just I put on one of these gloves here. I got some work gloves and uh, I just snap it by my hand. That's what I do. Did I change that? No, I didn't. Okay. So we need we need to change the score and the score is going to be one in the favor of Terran. So that's awesome. Uh, so Protoss has bit the dust, which means that on game number six, it's gonna be effort versus last. <coughs> Ah, oh, very interesting. I did not know Effort was going to be part of this, but he is. Can Zerg win it? This is the last of Zerg. We've seen Zero. We've seen Hero go down. We're on game number six. Welcome all to this cast. I am your host, Beastu Dagger, for today. As I do see you guys on Tuesdays, on Thursdays, um, I see you during a Africa Star League team battles also. You can find me on africa.tv slash ASL, ENG, uh, ASL2 ENG2. I'm pretty sure I said that backwards, whatever. I've said it too many times today that I've forgotten. And if you go to that channel, it's great to support me. Why? Because Africa TV is sponsoring forward events. And the more viewership you give to my channel, the more we are likely to get sponsorships in the future. And so that benefits all of us, not just me. I'm just selfish because I do enjoy uh, viewerships. And so Neo Medusa, the three player map, we've seen this a few times. It's an older map if you're not familiar. The third spawn is gonna be over here. Um, on top of that, let's, let's take this back. On top of that, there's a, like an electric circuit type thing where you can expand behind if you want to, to get the free mineral patch patches from the back of your base and of course there's temples that you can use mineral glitches through uh, to sneak units in and do tricky attacks. So this is a weird map, it's an odd map and it allows for quite some fun. I'm a big fan as a Protoss player of Neo Medusa, uh, but I think that this is going to be a good ZBT. Now now listen, uh, Effort is a really really good Zerg player, he, he is a contender for the top. I. I don't know who we put as number one Zerg. Really, you know, Zero Effort and Hero are supposed to be the best top three Zerg players. But Jadong 
is in the mix now. He actually got pretty far in the Africa Star League. Despite not looking that great, he continued to win. And I would say the same thing for Stork. Stork did not play well, yet he still had a deep run in the Africa Star League. How do those players do it? They just like, they have this, this uh, like, you know, statistic around them that just allows them to automatically qualify for quarterfinals. And, and here comes the initial attack with this uh, drone trying to at least disrupt the worker. And I like this last AKA Alpha Go responds very quickly to bring another SCV over to put it up. Now, five plus one five racks is popular play, but can plus one five racks play out really well here on a map that's designed quite differently? Obviously, there's a lot of space here, which means that turning it up can get awkward. You kind of want to keep your base very, very tight knit. Meanwhile, Mutalists are really good on this map. In my opinion, I think this is a go-to Muta map. This is something that you want to see from a Zerg player be successful with. But right now, what are we seeing here? The natural base only being taken, lots of Zerglings, and GG. I honestly, I, I was talking too much about these players. I did not realize, oh, hold on, we're going back. We're going back real quick. <laughs> <sighs> oh my god i'm out of it uh, once i pass that two hour marker my brain dies all right let's go back into game number six this is the, this is the game i dreamed of by the way okay so what we're seeing here because i did such a bad job is that instead of the the gas trick to actually get a drone um the spawning pool coming up first so this is an over pool build now the spawning pool finishes up and now it's all zerglings from here so zig zerglings start going on their way then the expansion comes meanwhile all this coming up because this was a, a 14 cc super greedy the barracks came second zerglings run in gg <laughs> Oh, sometimes I run my mouth. Okay, so that's the last of Terrans. Terrans are eliminated. There's one Zerg remaining. Zerg does get a win. Good for them. At least that was quick enough for us to get through a second time. <laughs> Alright, let's get in the next game. Effort, when he loses, Protoss wins the whole thing. He's got two Protoss players to defeat. Can he defeat them all? That's the major question here. Movie versus Effort. <coughs> Coughing into the microphone. P for permanent. As Protoss will be the last race to be defeated if they lose. Oh, here we are. At the top left hand corner, it is going to be Evert. The only Zerg player to take a win today. And at the bottom right, it is going to be Movie, the second Protoss player that will be playing today. Let's speed things up just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're going to cheat the early game just uh, just a tad, but we'll keep an eye on it, okay? We will keep an eye on it this time. I am going to show you what you guys all deserve in a good cast. Meanwhile, this probe coming out. The pylon coming up at the front. Uh, let's see here. Still, we're seeing the Overlord. No additional base yet, but it's looking like 12 hatch. Guys, everything is under control. This is going to be 12 hatch. But is this going to be... Uh, gateway first build will movie do it this time let's keep an eye on it this this is the 12 hatch we were hoping for and now we're going to see an economical game instead of well you know what overfull wasn't cheesy it was just risky and it worked out against alpha goat whose ai is going to have to evolve so this is a forge expand because we're on la mancha which is a four player map if i do remind you again and so yeah, now we're back down the fastest. Okay, so we just, what do we, zoom up a minute in this game? Not too bad. We're just trying to cut some corners here and save some time. This drone is about to be able to scout out this base over here too. Meanwhile, this overlord is going to make it over to the right and be gravely disappointed to see nothing. Or maybe it's happy. You think it gets over here and it's just like, I don't see anything. Alright, I'm just going to hang out in this desert and not get killed. Until Corsairs come out. I don't know why I gave that Overlord some sort of southern type accent. But we do see that the spawning pole about to finish up. The extractor is going to be finishing up. A, a nice quick extractor follow up here. 
Meanwhile, there's the third base. Just getting concerned not seeing that third. The gateway out at the front. This a Forge expand has uh, officially been successful. Behind this, we can't tell what the tech is going to be. Other than that, it looks like it's just a standard gas in the Stargate. Movie likes to play aggressive gateway first, so I'm surprised that he's not going for that here. But I guess after seeing effort roll out with those Zerglings right away, he does not want to deal with that. Overpool can be very, very strong against uh, gateway first also. So that's one of the other concerns that Movie may have had. All right. So this get this hatchery is going to finish up. I'm sure that movie is going to take this probe before it does die off and, and send it over towards the right to scout it out. Speed's not going to be researched yet. This is straight the lair. And I'm, I'm actually curious if this is going to be a mutilisk build. Sometimes we get to see those every once in a while. But we'll have to keep an eye on this gas. It would be weird to go to mutilisk because of how far the bases are away. That Mutalist can get shut down pretty easily um, by by Corsairs. <clears throat> so unless you feel like you have some advantage, uh, terrain advantage, that you can take advantage of with your Mutalist, it's really not worth the investment, especially with this long travel distance. So going up the lair, I guess I guess it's more of, of, of get the Spire out, get this two Scourge out, um, and, and then switch over to your Hydralis tech. To start controlling the ground. Yeah, there we go. We do see that spire. And I guess the only way that we would be able to confirm that it would be Mutas is if a gas was taken right now. And and sometimes even you could just add this base, just take a gas only, and that's what the drones would be for. But since it's gonna be neither, we can just go ahead, scratch that off. It's just me throwing out a build that will never happen. Well, plus one is being researched here, and this is a lot of Zerglings. I was wondering about that count. So 13 Zerglings, and he's actually going to try and go for it. And he will get this gateway, which is which is great. Uh, getting, killing off this gateway is going to weaken the army count so much. So even though one Zergling, ah, uh, the, double, the double tap from that Photon Cannon gets the final Zergling, that's really bad because you usually can build a consistent amount of zealots out of this and this gateway is going to set that that zealot count back by a good minute i wish i knew the exact exact time it took to build a gateway but we're just going to say a minute at this point before this gateway will finish up a second gateway inside the natural base is also something i want to point out remember it's becoming more and more common we saw this earlier from shuttle 2 and the shuttle versus zero zvp is is that players protoss players love building the second gateway inside the natural and <clears throat> it especially led towards that because we saw dt build and it allows the, the zealot dt combo to come out so so this is almost the exact same build literally the almost exact same build except for this gateway was lost so it's a dt first and then high templar complete follow-up which makes you so safe against Zerg, unless Zerg actually went for fast Overlord research right away, which we don't see here, and I don't believe Overlords are moving fast. Let's see if we can, and that looked slow there. Oh, we did see move, we did see move. Okay, so slow Overlords there, which means that DT defense is gonna be quite strong, but instead it is gonna be DT push out. So let's see, two salts gonna come up at that location, we're in the Corsairs, three Corsairs in here, and Movie is one of the players that I will say has better Corsair control than most, especially for someone who doesn't practice as rigorous, rigorously as, as most Corsair players. Four, four Corsairs, and it's going to clean up most everything, and those Scourge do nom up the first one, but now that the Overlord is down, he's got to get this final Overlord. He's got to get this final Overlord here, and that's why he's just eating these Scourge kills, because he wants the GT to do maximum amount of damage. Oh my god, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get this Overlord, and a DT, the DT goes down. Wow, what a nice defense by effort to be able to block all that off. And that was a huge commitment of Corsairs and not worth the trade. I think that that movie should have bailed out of the plan instead of trying to force and make it happen. And now we're seeing what predicament he is in. That was really, really bad. Meanwhile, plus one is going to be finishing up shortly. Imagine if he went in with three more zealots later with plus one. 
okay? I'm just saying. There is a huge reason for why the Bisu build 2.0 has become so much more successful is because there's the patience for the plus one plus a speed upgrade on the Zealots. Let's go and check in on this Citadel of a Dune. And it is going to be finishing up in just a second. The spawn camping of these Scourge is just perfect too because you don't have to worry about them. They're going to engage on that Corsair very quickly. And you notice that there is no, there's only one Corsair. That one Corsair needs to be brought back. Where is it? It's not with the army over here. It is just that it's just being lazy. This Corsair is being lazy when instead it could have taunted the Scourge over. And the Scourge were actually going for the kill. Meanwhile, let's look at the actual thing here. So these Zealots coming in with plus one. This is a strong Archon coming in here. He's often not to go for Storm. And this is going to be so much better. So this is exactly the timing that I was talking about. But I think if he was patient earlier, pulled back his couple Corsairs and that single DT, right now he could have three Corsairs with this army, a DT with this army, and, and this would be way, way more damaging. But Effort, he's got a good time where he's transfer, he's uh, transitioned into uh, Mutalus. As you can see, now we now understand that it is Mutus in the Switch because there have been so many Corsairs killed off. There's been that gas mining at the natural base and this is a pretty good transition for Effort uh, to deal with uh, with this Protoss army. As long as he can kill off these Zealots. As, when the Zealots scatter though, they make the clay damage so much more weaker. And it's kind of sad how long it takes for these uh, Mutalists to kill us off. In fact, these Zerglings should have come back a lot sooner. Now, speed is done for these Zealots. And the Zealots are going to be heading towards the left side trying to do divert whatever damage they can distract this army because he knows that the mutas are coming across wow so the mutas just left the mutas just headed across and this hatchery is going to go down that is not going to be defended there's a lot of circlings that are going to pop out here but regardless i think he should be able to get both hatcheries let's look at the muta damage though 52 probes is a movie going to lose a lot of these probes? He's got quite a few Corsairs now, and I think Effort made a huge mistake going for uh, go, going for these Mutas because the Mutas aren't working out. I don't know how he's going to. Oh my God! With those Scourge bombs, what? Some good Muta splitting, some good Scourge bombs coming in here, and he's chasing down the last of these Corsairs, and he does get it. So as long as he stays away from these Archons. The Zealots are taking down the rest of this uh, hatchery here. All those Zerglings that were there to defend are getting taken out too. Wow, this is just chaos between both these players. Effort trying to do what damage he can. But remember, 52 probes is making this pretty strong. He's going to need a third base though. As you can see, the mineral patches are starting to get pretty sparse uh, between the main and the natural base. These Zealots clean up really well. Not much to defend at home. Only a few, Zer 17 Zerglings, I guess that's a little bit more than a few. But can they deal with the Zealots? Movie's playing a good game, and I think that he might be able to close it out right now. Let's see. That's yeah, literally the last Zerg Pope from Effort, and all Effort is doing is building, building a bunch of Mutalists. That's all he's doing, is, do, is focusing on these Mutalists, which means that actually a second Stargate actually would have been very helpful, but instead he's dropping down a couple cannons, fo focusing on just these ground units. If the High Templar get picked off, Effort can turn this game around. That is what I believe might be able to happen. He's taking a base here at the third, uh, at the nine o'clock position. And we're, we have nothing else to focus on. Uh, this Nexus is gonna come up, but this is really literally the most important thing. If these 11 Mutalists get killed off right here, then this game is over for Effort. He has to engage and keep them alive. I love that he's got some lings over here to help with him. And so many Scourge just is turning into a ZVZ style air combat. And these Corsairs, along with this single Archon, are going to try and defend as best they can. Alright, let's look. Three hatcheries, a bunch of Hydralists in the back. Uh, no upgrades. Oh, he went over here. He got the cancel. He got the cancel on top of that Mutalus. Or on top of that Nexus. And so the Mutal is doing really well. Let's teleport over here. And looking inside the main base one more time. Movie, Movie has a considerable army that he could actually leave his base with. 
And now he's letting Effort get a third base. Effort's really uh, climbing his way back into this game. There's a distinct possibility that he takes this to the rubber match. Now we can see that... Uh, okay, so if he gets the High Templar picks that I was talking about, if he can get this last High Templar... Uh, maybe, I don't know. This is looking way too strong. He doesn't have any ground army to deal with this. Let's look at the Hydralis count. He's got 21 Hydralis. The Hydralis are looking like they're going to go in for a backstab, but Movie's a main army just might be too strong. This is looking like the first PvZ that we saw between Shuttle and Hero, where Shuttle moved out with just a way too strong ground army, despite the fact that there were uh, quite a few units for, for Hero in that game. And this one, it just effort, is looking way, way too weak. Can he bust down this wall? Dude, this is a strong counterattack. And these units need to engage right away. This Nexus, once it goes down, the Zelts can engage uh, pretty effectively. This Archon needs to do a ton of damage. And the Archon is going to die off very quickly. The range of the Hydralis allow Hydralis to engage the Archons much more effectively than, than uh, Utilis can. But this is the... I think Probes may need to get pulled here to hold on to his, uh, his main and natural base. If you pull Probes... You're making a huge mistake as a Protoss player, especially when you have so many units out on the map. The food supply is 128 to 54, but here come the probes. So remember, he's, he's constantly deciding whether he should pull those probes or not. The Hydralis, now that they're not at this third base, uh, are going to um, open up an opportunity for the third hatchery, or the third base location to get taken out. And again, if ever, ever is in an unwinnable position at this point, and it's got to be looking bad for Zerg players who are looking to take home the pot. Remember, this is a cumulative effort, and a cumulative roll allows uh, you know, the, that race to take home the money. Meanwhile, this third base is going to be coming at the 3 o'clock position. The last game of the night, possibly, if Movie can win right here. A nice storm that comes down. Weakens up all these units. Let's take a look. You can see every single one of them. A few came in just a second ago, sitting at full health. These Hydras don't even have the time to really focus down these Corsairs. Because every time the Corsairs draw the Hydralis up that ramp, they weaken up the front. And now this is the opportunity as the Corsairs do see. And the Protoss can move in. There's Dark Templars leading at the front here. You can see the Dark Templars already got a kill. It's going to rack them up more. Some Zealots are getting some high kill counts too. And Effort, he's going to have to call it GG. GG, what a game, what a game. And now, that's it. Zerg have been eliminated. Protoss with five wins today. Terran eliminated too. Unless I'm missing something, everybody has been eliminated. I think I was given a decoy replay for game number nine. Or, yeah, game number eight. Let's go and investigate anyway. I like to do my due diligence. Yeah, I guess this was doubled up. Ha! Okay, cool. Very, very neat. So, movie does it. Movie wins it. A great day from Shuttle, a solid closing from Movie, and Protoss have dominated week two. So guys, tune in next week on Thursday for the KLM matches. If you want to donate, please donate to my stream with the button at the bottom or give me stars through Africa TV's ASL2 ENG2 um, stream site. I appreciate your viewership. I'm sorry for my exhausted rants at the end of this, but uh, I am beat and I would like to head... Uh, I'm going to watch some TV first. I'm just laying on the couch, veg it out for a minute, and then head to bed. I've got some Horizon I might need to play too. Guys, that game is addictingly good. I'm going to try and, and try and get a few more levels of that, possibly also. All right. Did I miss a Jehoon versus Effort game before a movie? Did I? Oh, oh, I'm, I don't, I'm so terrible. I'm so terrible. Let's just fast forward through this. Let's just, we're going to ruin this. Effort apparently wins this. Apparently Effort versus Jehoon was played. Oh, I'm so full of shame. I'm so, I'm so terrible as a caster. I'm going to weep. Looks like this was a pretty decent one, hey? 
Neo Jade again. Oh, bait of the Protoss in this one is too easy. This puff on Neo Jade. Oh, Mutas wreck everything. It wasn't a game you wanted to see anyway. It was all Mutas. Blah! All right. <laughs> Guys, tune in on Saturday. I'm going to try and get Elegant to cast with me. So, uh, Flash for the win has to study for finals. So, if you miss Elegant and you want to hear his wonderful voice, catch me on Africa TV, ASL, ENG2. And we will be casting there. Take care once again. Uh, maybe I've got some music I can play to close out this stream. Let me switch over to scene number six also. Yes. We've got this right. Let's go to my downloads. Let's go to this. All right. Take care, everybody.